Today I'm going to talk about getting started in Captivate, what Captivate is used for when you use it in computer-based training, and some of the basics of the software tool. Um, so first of all, what is Captivate? When do you use it? Captivate, so the best way to describe it, think PowerPoint on steroids, major steroids. It's very similar look and feel to PowerPoint, um, not much harder to develop in. Um, very similar look and feel. The advantage of Captivate is, it, is it that it does all kinds of things that PowerPoint doesn't. Very cool piece of software. Um, so when would you use it? Um, really any time that you are going to develop some kind of computer-based training. So think computer-based training, video-based training, software demos, um, things of that nature where you need some basic interactions. You might need to track it on an LMS like report scores. Um, you might need to develop something that's SCORM compliant that works well and is friendly with an LMS. Um, you might need some more advanced interactions than PowerPoint offers like games that are embedded. You know, PowerPoint doesn't do a great job of embedding things into it. Um, so, you know, I can embed a video into PowerPoint and then I play it on the next computer and sometimes it doesn't work. Um, with Captivate, you can solve all of those issues. You can also publish it to a lot of different formats like HTML5 so that it plays everywhere. And you can make responsive projects, which means that, so responsive means that like it'll work on my desktop, my mobile device and tablet, and I can make it look nice on each of those. Um, you've probably visited websites that are responsive and just haven't realized that's the terminology. Um, and one of the new cool features is that you can do virtual reality. All right, so let's talk about Captivate. Let's get into it. So for those of you listening, you're going to listen. I'm, I'll describe kind of what I'm doing. Um, and for those of you watching, um, you can feel free to watch the screen. All right, so I, I went, I opened up Adobe Captivate. This is the 2019 version. So it just, you know, pretty new. And uh, there are six options when you first open it up and are going to create a new project. So you have responsive project. That's what I just described, where it's going to work on computer, mobile, tablet, all different sizes. It's going to change based on the size of the device. We have a virtual reality project, which is really cool. I've yet to really play around with this um, because I don't have a 360 camera, so I'm not actually able to record anything. So I'm going to have to import some stuff and really play around with the feature. Um, this is a new feature that I'm very, very excited about. I think in the training world, this is a, this is the direction we're going. I think this is really cool. I'm very excited to see this. Um, even if it's not that great right now, I'm not going to be disappointed because I know it's coming and it'll just get better and better and Adobe will keep improving it, but I'm really happy to even see it. And so far, what I've seen is pretty impressive. I'm actually really excited to you know get in and use that. You have a blank project. Think of a blank PowerPoint presentation. We have software simulation where we walk through a piece of software click by click. Um, we have a video demo, which is basically like creating a video, capturing what you're doing. Um, one thing I've noticed about the Adobe Captivate video demo is that it's not playing friendly with 4K monitors in that I can't even record the video demo. If I'm on a 4K monitor, I have to lower and change some settings. Um, um, so I think that's an issue they really need to work on. Um, and then you can import other files like PowerPoint. So those are my kind of options when I start. I'm just going to click Responsive Project. I think that's going to be the basic default for most people when they start. Even if you're doing like a software simulation, um, you can do that. I can click Responsive Project and then create something like a software simulation or I can click, I can start with Blank Project and then do a software simulation. So I'm going to click Responsive Project for right now. What that's going to do is on my screen, it's now going to look very similar to PowerPoint. I'm going to see a big blank slide in the middle, and then I'm going to see all my slides to the left, just like PowerPoint. I'm going to go through and talk about some of the basics of Captivate right now, kind of the overview interface. Um, for those of you listening, you'll get to hear about some of the features that you know Captivate has. So first at the top, we have our, you know, our basic menu with like our file, save as, export, um, and those kind of settings like help and things of that nature. All right, so then under that, very similar to PowerPoint, we have our slides. And this is where we can in insert slides just like PowerPoint. I can insert a new slide. However, in Captivate, you have a bunch of different options. Like I can insert just a blank slide. I can also insert two different kinds of 
quiz slides. One's called a question slide, the other's a knowledge check slide. The difference, the question slide or quiz is made for really recording information. Like, so at the end, I can show the users a score. Um, I can attach that score to an LMS or an internal server versus the knowledge check, which is really just on the slide itself. They both look the same, but the knowledge check really allows you to just let the users make sure they're doing okay. It's, they're, you're not capturing or recording that score. You're creating the quiz to do that. Then we have, we can create, we, as I said, you can add that software simulation if you'd like to. Um, and then we can add video, demo, or they let me add virtual, a virtual reality slide, which is kind of cool. Or even just a 360 camera where you can, you know, move the image around. Like if you've, any of you have been looking at real estate lately or other things, a car, the inside of a car, you know, you can scroll around and see that's what they're doing there. Pretty cool though. We can choose our themes just like PowerPoint. Um, then we have, they have a new thing, a fluid box, which allows you to adjust the size of the screen based on what you're looking at. We have our text where we can enter in actual text or we can have text input, text entry box where users entering something. You know, like if they were entering in an answer and checking. We have our shapes, just like Word, PowerPoint, where you can add a bunch of shapes. We have objects. So objects are a bunch of different things. So we have a highlighted box where we can highlight something on the screen. We have a mouse, which a mouse is actually allows you to show your mouse on the screen and have it move in a certain direction. So if you wanna show the users moving your mouse from left to right, like between button clicks in a software simulation, you can do that. A zoom area allows you to zoom in on certain pieces of information. And then we have some rollover options, like a rollover image. Rollover image means like if I roll over this image, something happens, like another image pops up on the screen. And then we have web where we can actually attach like a piece of a web page or a web page to a Captivate slide. We have our interactions. Interactions are things like a button. So I can create a button, have it do various things, create like a checkbox. And then I have a bunch of learning interactions. Learning interactions in Captivate are like, kind of built in little pieces of software that you can add to your slides. So like an example is Jeopardy. I can, at one learning interaction is Jeopardy and I can just slide it right onto the screen and create a Jeopardy game. And there's a bunch of different kinds of these like drag and drop, um, different kinds of little mini games or mini interactions, like different kinds of process models going through. They have a bunch of basic default ones which are, which are actually really nice and really good. So they have these learning interactions. I really like these, they can add a lot to a piece of training. We have, you know, we can import different kinds of media like images, audio, video. We can add YouTube or different kinds of video. We can actually record video and narration. We can save, we can preview. So preview allows you to like play this slide, which is okay, but I really like to um, play the whole thing, like see what it's going to look like. Um, in a browser, so I like to do that. We have publish, or we can publish for various kinds of devices, as I mentioned. You know, you can publish for mobile or whatever you're publishing to. They also give you options for publishing to Adobe's cloud, which is nice. Um, we have assets, which are like your images and uh, various pieces of media you can use, and Adobe has tons of them, which is really cool, but they do make you pay for some as well. Um, but they, there are really great options there. Um, and then we have our community, which is like help and accessing the Adobe community. And that's really what the screen looks like. Um, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can click there's a properties button and library and the properties are really whatever, like if I'm working with a button and I click properties, it'll give me all the options for that button. Um, next to that is the library. Think of the library as an actual library. Um, the point of the library is that it's like almost like a the cloud, a cloud service in that like I can share a Dropbox link with a hundred different people. Um, versus me sending an attachment to 100 different people. The library is very similar to that. It stores my, it's a place to store my file and if I put the same like video 10 times in my presentation, it only is really like one size. It's not like 10, 10 megabit videos, just one 10 minute megabit video 10 times. So it's a great way to, you know, store things and keep things, especially if you're working with a, you know, a project with like 
20 different modules for the same client, you'll have all their logos and their default images, all the default buttons and everything you're working with right there in the library. And that's the basic interface of Captivate, kind of what it's used for. Um, so those are you know the basic nuts and bolts of this is what it does. Um, now I'm going to go on and in my uh, next videos and podcasts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through how to actually use all these features and start to actually develop computer-based instruction. This was really just introduction, like this is what it does. These are some of the basics, how you get, you know, what happens when you first go in. Thank you.